It had snowed so much overnight that we barely could open our door. See, this was a once in a generation winter storm that blesses Vermont and skiers talk about forever. I absolutely love skiing, but as my wife loaded up her skis into the car, I slowly put mine away. Skiing would just be too dangerous for me right now. You see, this has been my reality for the past 20 years. I am an Olympic mountain biker, and my past 20 years has been centered around this one question. Will this help or hurt my career? There is no clocking out on an Olympic pursuit. I had worked my entire life and dedicated everything to my dream of winning an Olympic medal in mountain biking. I was on a natural progression from an 11th place in my first Olympic Games in 2012 to an even better 7th place in, in my second Olympic Games in 2016. Tokyo 2020 Olympics would be my final shot at that medal. The first and arguably hardest step to fulfilling that dream is qualifying for the team. Including myself, there were six highly competitive American riders vying for only a couple of spots on the team. Would you work together with these five other women that stood between you and your dream? My answer is yes. But why? <laughs> Especially when there are lifelong dreams at stake. There are big benefits to competitive collaboration. Competitive collaboration is this. You bring your best, I'll bring my best, and together we will rise. The word competitive is in there for a reason. This is fierce. <laughs> the collaboration is lifting each other up, supporting one another's growth, and celebrating each other's victories. In competitive collaboration, excellence is embodied collectively. Now let's get into it. For the first time in history, the USA women's mountain bike team had the opportunity to qualify not one, not two, but three spots for the Tokyo Olympic Games. In order to do this, the USA women had to be ranked in the top two in the world nation's rankings. These rankings are determined by individual points accumulated by the top three ranked riders. In order to improve on our nation's ranking of seventh, and achieve a top two ranking, we had to work together. Now, you may think women collaborate by default, but not when it comes to individual sports. <laughs> Let me tell you. <laughs> when winning is how you make your living, and women have less opportunity to do so than men, a self-centered approach is the blueprint. With a history of fierce competition, especially when it comes to Olympic qualification, the American women took a siloed, all-for-themselves approach. If we were going to accomplish winning three spots for the Tokyo Olympics, we were going to have to buck the norm that has been the sport of mountain biking for decades. We were going to have to become a team. We had to work together. So we went after it in ways that utterly belie tradition. Aaron Huck, Chloe Woodruff, and myself, all top contenders for the Olympic team, had a meeting in, at World Cup Finals in 2018 to strategically map out the competitive calendar, maximize our race opportunities, and the amount of points that we could earn. This sent us on a journey racing around the world in far-flung locations like Israel, Japan, and Greece, sometimes all in the same month. Here's my approach to competitive collaboration. We have the entire world to race against, so why would we focus all of our energy on racing each other? Instead, let's work together to become one of the best nations in the world. You have to lift each other up. It's just as simple as that. And this is what that looks like. We rode the World Cup courses together, helping each other with line choices, leading each other off of jumps, drops, and through rock gardens. 
It also looked like literally carrying teammate Erin Huck off the World Cup course after she crashed in training and broke her ankle. We went to the hospital alongside her, even though it was the day before our race. And as we continued racing throughout the season and Erin was sidelined with this injury, we called to check in on her to make sure she was doing okay and staying motivated. It did not matter that Erin was one of the top contenders for the Olympic team. What matters in competitive collaboration is supporting Erin so Erin can bring her best to the team, which pushes me to bring my best to the team. In the absence of competition during the pandemic, we created a team training camp where we could push each other and bring our best. Unfortunately, I was dealing with a back injury and recovering, which had limited my training, making this a very vulnerable time for me. My teammates had my back. One day, they set their own personal training aside to do my first set of intervals with me. They encouraged me that I was riding strong and looking really good. In a time where they could have absolutely torn me apart and rocked my confidence before these crucial Olympic qualifying races, they chose to lift me up and build my confidence. In competitive collaboration, excellence is embodied collectively. Now this is the really fun part. This is the part where you get to celebrate each other's victories. And this usually comes in the form of finish line hugs, and I mean a lot of them. <laughs> because we have pushed each other through competitive collaboration, we can all own a small part of each other's victories and celebrate them. For example, in 2018, even though I had the worst world championship result of my career, I could not get off my bike quick enough on the finish line to give teammate Kate Courtney a hug when I found out she had won the world championships. See, I had mentored her for years as a teammate, and this was a major, major accomplishment. Excellence is embodied collectively. And my goodness, do we have a lot of excellence to celebrate. We did it. <laughs> By heart, <laughs> thank you. By harnessing the power of competitive collaboration and by working together, the USA women were ranked number two in the world and we secured three spots for the Tokyo Olympic Games. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> three women would compete in the Tokyo Olympics compared to two in the previous Olympic Games and this is a historic milestone. Kate Courtney, Haley Batten, and Aaron Huck. These three names comprise the Tokyo Olympic team, and you'll notice mine was not among them. As heartbroken as I was that a back injury prevented me from that last opportunity to at that Olympic medal, I thought to myself, if I'm not going to be there at the Olympics, I better give everything to my teammates who are going because they are representing me and all of our collective hard work to get them to that Olympic start line. Their success is my success. So when first-time Olympian Haley Batten had never even seen the Olympic course, I spent hours with her pouring over photos and videos of it. And in that time together, she offered me the greatest gift of the broken journey of my past four years. Through tears and a hug, she said to me, Leah, you are so much more than a result or an Olympic selection. You will be standing on that Olympic start line with me. It will always choke me up to hear these words. What we had accomplished whether I was on that start line or not, was something bigger than any one of us alone. We had set a new norm for USA mountain biking, one of teamwork, support, connection, and excellence. Through competitive collaboration, we unlocked true potential individually and as a team. 
If the USA women's mountain bike team can work together in the most unlikely of circumstances in the buildup to the Tokyo Olympic Games and as a result have success, can you even imagine what we can accomplish if we work together in other unlikely circumstances? I challenge you to find the places in your life where you can competitively collaborate. I know that there are opportunities where we can lift each other up, work together, and unlock true potential. In a world that can feel increasingly isolating, we all have the keys to a better, more connected life through competitive collaboration. You bring your best, I'll bring my best, and together we will rise. Thank you. <laughs>